this is John Hornbeck joining us on Cycling Illustrated. He was riding with Hoggins Berman and he just signed a pro contract with 5 Hour Energy. So I want to get to that first and find out how that all went down and how did, how you got connected with um, Frankie and all those guys. Um, so it's been going on for a little bit. <clears throat> I met Frankie a couple of years back at Interbike and talked to him a little bit there. It was actually right before I signed with Hoggins the first first year, so 2012. And then, uh, you know, just always kind of kept in touch with those guys. Um, and then really... 2012 was like the first year I was doing any NRC stuff, so I was like just kind of in the races, not doing anything special but there, and then last year uh, I started getting better results and being up front more, so I kind of just started talking to those guys, and I actually <clears throat> called Frankie around like Utah, Colorado time, because I was talking to some domestic teams about doing uh, like a Star J role with them, and uh I had some leads, but nothing really panned out. And then I just kind of kept in contact with those guys and um, talked to a bunch of them before Interbike. Then I went down Interbike myself and just uh, met a lot of those guys from different teams. And I met the owner from uh, from Five Hour Jason. Had a good chat with him. And then uh, you know just kept on and just kept being persistent, just talking to those guys. And Frankie uh, reached out to uh, my former directors, uh, Burke Swindlehurst from last year, and then. Uh, Joe Holmes from the year before, and then my coach Ben Day talked to him, and then it just came about like that. And then I got the call from Frankie. That's awesome. That's a that's a big <clears throat> move. And now I know Francisco's Mancebo is not on that team anymore, and I know they had a great year last year. But you added uh, one of the Kehoe brothers to your squad. What does the team look like? What is it sizing up to be? It looks like one of the strongest teams in the NRC to me. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty stoked. I think it's going to be solid. Uh, we got, uh, you know, Chad Bayer, who has a lot of experience, of course. Gavin Mannion, who's going to, he's a solid guy, of course. And then we have Kehoe. Um, I think there's, I believe there's only 11 of us. Um, three or four guys from last year. Uh, Stemper, Jim, he's there. And he's kind of the only guy I really know. He's, uh, I've been talking to him a little bit about just getting some advice from him. And, you know, he's, that guy's just got a wealth of experience as well. Um, Bobby Sweeting's on it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think on paper it's a pretty solid squad. I'm stoked to be a part of it. Uh, I know I can learn a lot, and you know, hopefully we'll get some solid results and just be up there. What what is, what is your goals going into this season? I mean, you know, you're obviously around. You mentioned them, some really seasoned seasoned guys. I know you had a pretty good result in uh, Hila last year. What is your goals for this year, and how how are you going to improve over what you did last year? Uh, really, just you know, take the next step up and just just be competitive. Um, I've always looked at my racing. I've done it for four years now, so going into my fifth year racing is I just want to make uh, you know improvements going up each year. And uh, you know, now signing with a a pro team, I don't want to you know kind of be one of those guys that's just a pack filler. You know, I want to be up there and being competitive and whether that be helping the team or just learning from the team um hopefully i'll have you know a couple races to go for it but uh just like really learning you know being around those guys they they know so much and just i've been amateurs for the last couple years and uh but yeah you know I, like I'm, i did pretty good last year on some results and i just want to keep building on that and if i do uh, i think i'll be pretty solid now, let me ask you a question. Um, do you know what races your teams are going to be in? Are you guys going to do big races like Tour California? Or where, where are you guys going to – what races are you guys going to do? Uh, I mean, as of now, we don't really have much set since the invites haven't gone out. Of course, we're hoping for uh, California, Utah, Colorado. Um, I've just heard we might be going back to Spain. I know they did it last year. And then there's been talks about South America. And then, of course um, – going back to Asia later in the year, but I think a lot of it revolves around the invites for the U.S. tours, cool. so without that having been sent out, I don't think we have, I haven't heard much of a complete race schedule yet until we get to camp, I think. What does what your training look like um, getting ready for a big season like this? I mean, 
if you guys go to these big races, it'll probably be more racing than, than you've probably ever done in one year. What what does your training look like, and how do you manage that? Yeah, training has definitely gone up this off season training, I guess, compared to last. Uh, my coach Ben has uh, ramped up the hours, um, just a lot more volume. I think I've really been trying to tail back my work schedule and just concentrate more on my training to really make the best of it. Um, How many hours are you riding a week? Uh, I'm doing anywhere from t- averaging 20 to 26 hours right now a week, pretty consistent. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, I stayed with uh, Cameron Wirth from Candle Pro Cycling for about a week, so I trained with him before he left for uh, Down Under, and uh, that guy's a solid guy, <laughs> puts in a lot of hours, so we are doing long days, and just you know, getting around those kind of guys and riding with them and training with them obviously helped my hours up go up. But uh, yeah, just honestly, it's just been more, just more riding. Oh, that's that's good. Um, what what kind of hobbies do you do outside of? Uh, I know you guys when you're when you're training, you guys live, eat, and breathe this stuff because it's the only way you can keep your body that physically in check. So, what what hobbies do you do outside of cycling? Um. I mean, really, lately, besides all the training, um, just hang out with friends when I can. I still, with coming from motocross and racing motocross my whole life, pretty much until a few years ago, I still follow that um, pretty closely. Uh, I went to the first Supercross Anaheim one about a week ago, and then really just I hang out with my girlfriend quite a bit. But, uh, I mean, honestly, from all the training lately, it's just... Like, when I'm not training or if I don't have to go to work, I'm pretty stoked just to sit and just do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm, you know, I know you're a, you're, a, you're a pretty badass mountain biker, too. Do you do any uh, training on the mountain bike right now, or is it just all strictly road? Yeah, it's pretty much all road. I did a, a mountain bike race maybe a month ago. It was pretty fun just to kind of do a little differently. Um, I try to keep it pretty focused on the road. Um I mean, mountain biking, luckily with my moto background, I can kind of hop on a mountain bike and uh, be fine on it. But uh, coming into this year, I, I just, I've just i been really like focused just on doing everything right, being on the road, not taking any chances on a mountain bike. I mean, you get on one, you kind of want to you know, mess around, go hit some jumps or something like that, and I know how easily you can throw something away with something like that. But uh, yeah, so as a mountain biker, I haven't really been on it much lately. Yeah, so tell me, tell me how important recovery is when you're on the level that you're going to be at. Um, um, how I mean, do you I, recover that quickly? That's like the number one thing I'm really working on right now is to boost my recovery. Um, like, cause I, you know, working, you know, it takes a lot out of you. So just, I mean, that's what I've noticed. You know, doing these training days, you can't do consistent, you know, five-hour days, five-hour days, you know, doing efforts, going to the gym, but also having to work. So... I've noticed this year I've tailored back my work schedule and, uh, you know, doing a lot more just resting, recover, and, you know, you do feel better the next day. You can get what you need out of it. And, I mean, you just, you consistently do that over time. That's how you're going to build it up. And not getting the right recovery or not getting the right rest, it's just going to kind of be a hinge on your factor. And it really adds up over, you know, three months of training. Yeah. Going into these races, what kind of pre-race homework can you do? I mean, if you go, let's say you end up in Spain, and you know, here's the here's the circuit. What kind of pre-race homework can you do? You know, when you guys get there, how, how does it how does it work? Could you could you give us a breakdown on how you figure out where you're riding? I mean, do you guys just have a meeting and kind of go over the the course, or how, how does it work? Uh, I think like someone like me, it's really going to be just talking to these other guys. I mean, obviously, I haven't done much racing outside of the states i did a little bit of racing in france last year on my own but you know these guys have done a lot of racing over there so kind of just kind of what they think is the best i mean i i really i'm not exactly sure how it'll go are ner- never- nerves gonna play a role when you're in that situation you know, I, or uh, i mean you know i'm sure it will be a little bit up when you take a step up into that level and you're racing those guys but at the same time just a bunch of guys in spandex, so try not to get too nervous of that. Um, but I'm sure a little bit will be there. Yeah. But uh, I guess I guess we'll only know when we get there. Well, 
Cycling Illustrated, and I am excited. You know, your your hometown from Marietta, California, and uh, you know, we'll be it'll be great following you and your progressions through the entire year, and you know, hopefully you'll get some big results, and we can all be excited about it. Um, just in wrapping it up, do you have anything that you want to add, or anybody that you want to thank? Um, you know, that got you this far. Yeah, you know, I've had a pretty solid group around me over the last few years. My coach Ben Day has really helped a lot. Uh, I started working with him just over two years ago, and I was a cat too. I want to say so. He's obviously gotten me to this point. And he but, rides with United Healthcare still. Yeah, he's still with UHC. Um, and he's just he's been a great guy to have in my corner. Uh, you know, my family's been supportive, even though I don't live at home or anything anymore. But my dad's always backed me. My roommate. Steve Quay has helped me out a ton, um, just with a lot of little things, friends, you know, my girlfriend, um, the shop I work at, Bike Shop Temecula, they've always been supportive with me and helped me with my racing, so it's... What is the bike shop in Temecula called? It's called the Bike Shop Temecula. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You guys can check it out. But, uh, yeah, you know, just friends, just... The support system has been great. So, and I know it's not easy being a pro cyclist. It's one of the hardest things I've seen people go through. And we wish you all the luck. And um, you know, we'll get some of your commentary as the year goes because I love reading your race reports. They're probably one of the most entertaining pieces I get, and we'll try to support you along the way. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, right. you know, any, anything I can do to help out. So, um, you know, thank you for the time doing this interview and everything. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, John. Have a good day. You too. See ya.